degree Celsius. It doesn't mean anything. If I say that 20 degree Celsius, it doesn't mean anything to it. But if this data is taken into a specific context, if we say that the temperature of uh, Bangalore is 20 degrees Celsius today, then this data has been taken into a specific context, which has been added to an information. Now, information cannot be translated into, cannot be transformed into knowledge unless it is accumulated and being used by the individual. Means an individual actor will take place to transform this information into a knowledge. So how this information can be transferred into knowledge? It's still, you can see here, the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius today in Bangalore. It's still now it is uh, being an information. It has not been in a knowledge form. So it will be a knowledge form where information will be accumulated, learned and internalized. Means, means internalized means will be used by the individuals. So if I use this information and say that I am going to wear a coat because today there is a coat. 20 degrees Celsius means the coat. Because I have learned this information and I have internalized this information by more, my more individual values. So I have given a value to this knowledge and I am going to wear a coat. So this has taken the form of knowledge. Now the question comes, knowledge has been generated. <coughs> In the coming slides we will see how knowledge has been generated. But before going to that, we will see types of knowledge. Actually, uh, we talk about two types of knowledge, that is explicit and tacit. And I still remember uh, last year we had three classes from uh, Kavi Mahesh who talked about knowledge management. So just to give a brief out what this type of knowledge are. Uh, explicit knowledge is a type of knowledge which we can share, which can be documented, which can be listed in the form of publication, such as uh, someone can say that patents, online databases, whereas tacit knowledge, which is a hidden knowledge and can only be shared by internalization, socialization and by the individuals grouping. In between these two knowledge, there is another knowledge called implicit knowledge, which can be gained by own learning or doing a research. So, <coughs> here I have listed out the four ways in which knowledge creation is being done. They have given a very specific names. The first one is tacit to tacit process, where tacit knowledge is being shared by the individual. It may take place in a canteen where the individual can share the tacit knowledge. Or you can say that an interpreter or a newcomer learn from his managers, from his teachers, from his guide. When he sits with him or he wants to interpret something new with him. <coughs> the next is tacit to explicit, known as externalization. Here the process takes to make the tacit knowledge into a form of explicit knowledge. Means once the tacit knowledge has been gained by someone, he wants to make it explicit. So it is an externalization. Uh, the process is to make the tacit knowledge explicit. The next one is explicit to explicit, that is combination. If we see the combination, then it is something to make explicit knowledge more dense, a more converted area, where explicit will be converted to more explicit. And the last one, where main thing, where the knowledge creates of its own and uh, is being disseminated, that is internalization, explicit to tacit. Here we make the explicit knowledge, here the knowledge can be only uh, made tacit to oneself if once someone has learned from it, has accumulated and codified that knowledge. Means there is a process where explicit knowledge for own usual individual use, it has again been transferred into a tacit knowledge. So now coming to the main field which I was talking about knowledge management. Usually people believe that knowledge management deals with the management of knowledge, no doubt. It is the management of knowledge but it has to manage with all the process which has taken place in the knowledge. Means we have to deal with the knowledge generation, we have to deal with the knowledge communication as well as for the knowledge transfer. So knowledge generation includes all activities. We bring up to light knowledge which is new, added to the individual or to the group. It has not been codified or captured, it cannot convert into knowledge. So here, the capture and representation of knowledge is very necessary. It can be either used by individual or by any organization. Now, once this has been codified, this has to be transferred so that knowledge can have its own value. So we also see that those things also should be managed while transferring the knowledge from one location to another at the right place, usually say to the right people at the right place at the right time. So including these things, generation, codification and transfer as well as refinement is being also added to this. This management will include into the uh, knowledge management. I have taken some uh, definitions by different thinkers. Actually, there are some of the uh, authors, some of them are practitioners in this field, and some of them are the research workers who are doing uh, field, uh, research in this field. So, the first one is by Carl Sagan. According to him, he has given a very brief uh, definition. According to him, the art of creating value from an organization in tangible assets. According to him, knowledge is an asset, so it should be managed. Uh, next, I have Devonport and Pusser. According to them, knowledge management is concerned with the exploitation and development of the knowledge. 
assets of an organization with a view to furthering the knowledge objectives. Whereas uh, the third one is from Carl Dick. No doubt he is a well known uh, consultant and practitioner which has given a very few. So I will be categorizing different tools based on different knowledge, uh, types of knowledge. Already I told about explicit, implicit and tacit knowledge. Besides this we will have, we will see other types of knowledge. For every type of knowledge, for explicit knowledge we have different, uh, different tools such as we are using system tools, database management system and data warehouses for explicit knowledge. If you talk about the know-how knowledge means uh, there is a query know-how, how, how has, uh, it has been done, how the knowledge has come, how the information has been created. So for this type of we have tools, collaboration tools, email and group there. The third category is the know-who, who has done what in which field. So there are tools for that, uh, this type of knowledge also. There are CRM school, social network analysis, knowledge portals. They are playing a very vital role, especially the knowledge portals. And the last one is no doubt the tacit knowledge, which is a hidden type of knowledge. This for this uh, management of this type of knowledge, we have different tools such as video conferencing, we have face-to-face -face facilitation, and other technologies as well. Now we have an overview, uh, overview of the game tools. I have a long list of uh, tools here, but due to shortage of time, I have taken up more specific tools which are more used or we can say which are more popular in this field. The first one is tools to assess knowledge. Actually here the tools for assess knowledge means there is a knowledge but to assess we should need a tool. So the name has given tools to assess knowledge uh, is to make explicit knowledge that can be shared and transferred to the enterprise information systems. Actually if we see the function how it works then it works on a powerful indexing system. To classify expertise based on both continent collaboration dynamics and networks within the enterprise. I have, uh, I will show some of the examples, some of the vendors as well as the applications on the web link which they are using. Actually they are all proprietary and they have, uh, if you see the cost, uh, the most important one on the screen left hand you can see the vendors who are providing this type of tools to assess knowledge. And uh, in the video you can see the applications on the web link. Uh, I have listed some of the examples with a long, long, a long list but I have taken the most uh, prominent one, the past, Canberra, Entopia and Excel. Uh, Canvera is a tool and used for retrieval where I will talk about what retrieval there is. Actually they are using the application that is known as retrieval there A. Canvera provides publishers with a leading edge slash technology on a software as a service but not on software as a tool or a technology. It provides a technical infrastructure, such expertise and better practice advice. Now I was talking about the application of retrieval air used by the vendors of Canvera. Actually retrieval there A, a new